Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board and Board of Health meeting August 8th, 2018 at 7 p.m. at the Deerfield Municipal Offices. Uh, this meeting is recorded. Uh, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The first thing on our agenda is to review the minutes from July 25th. Has everyone had a chance to read them? Yep. I make a motion. What, I had one, one thing I wanted to, to adjust was um, when I thank uh, David Gilbert Keith, um, it says, and Bob Armstrong, but I, that was supposed to be the board. That was that was the only change I thought. I'm just trying okay. to think if I had anything else. I had else. a um, couple uh, name changes. I uh, that she fixed. Thank oh, you did already. Okay, yeah. yeah. So that that's it. That was just the one. Yep. Right down the first. So I make page. A, a motion to uh, approve the minutes with the amended changes. I think it's right on this. Oh, right on the front. Because um, Bob Armstrong's the uh, from Conway, so it would be just the board instead. Keith and the board. Yep. He was here for that other thing, but well, yep. he didn't. He came late. He didn't, oh, that's right. He that's right. To take yep. him out. He is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a different item. So, uh, second. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, um, we have a hearing that's going to start at 7:15. Uh, so, for a couple of minutes, is there something you wanted to speak about? Trevor? Oh, well, um, I was just going to. Well, we have a few minutes to talk about. You know sewer abatements which is constantly um, going on so um, I wanted to talk and, and get some advice from you and maybe talk about where we want to move forward with with um, the policy really I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times and um, I continue to have conversations and I think in the future it'll just continue to be an issue until we um, until we decide on a, on, on a policy, whether we stay with this one and send out clarification to our residents or if we, you know, uh, come up with a different policy. And, and I guess for those just tuning in, the, the issue comes when um, in the summertime we give sewer abatements of, um, for, for watering of the yard and filling the pool, washing your car, that kind of stuff, um, water that doesn't go down in, into the sewer system. Um, so everybody automatically who's on sewer gets a, um, an abatement and they pay no more than 25% of the previous winter's usage. Um, we don't give any abatements in the wintertime. And the wintertime billing kind of runs from some, sometimes October uh, to May or April and um, sometimes in September. It's hard for the water department to kind of nail down exactly when they're going to do it and it takes a while to read everybody's meter. So sometimes September's can be hot and dry and people are still watering their lawn and, and uh, they may get caught, you know, putting thousands of gallons of water on the lawn when they think, you know, they're safe and they're, you know, they're done for the season. They don't, they don't think their meter's read yet. So, um, you know, and that's just the policy we have right now. I guess there's been different um, systems we've had over the years, not in my time, ever since I've been here, the water department has graciously given us their water readings, and that's the policy that we use to kind of set our, set our, our rates, um, depending on how much usage you have. So I don't know if that's the only system in the world that can be used, or, um, and so we, I was just trying to figure out, is there a way to, um, adjust those times that we read. I've been talking with Barbara as well, and it's important that we be consistent every, every year so that people expect to get a bill in the mail, expect, you know, they know when, they're, when their sewer bill and water bill is going to need to get paid, and then also we get the money in at a certain time so we pay our bills for the town. So um, there's a lot of moving parts, and I think one of the biggest moving parts that we have no control over is the water department. And I know we talked before about getting together with them. So I, I just wanted to um, say again to the community that, that it, is, um, it is on my, at least my radar, uh, of trying to look at that 
um, study it. When Dave Prickett does our study of our sewer, I'm hoping that we can, you know, pick his brain and work, you know, find out what our other communities are doing. Is this the best policy? Is it, you know, and if it is, I think we just need to be um, put out press release clarity. This is when the when it's read and it's a certain time frame, and then um, and then you know just to give people clarity and know what's happening. And so I just wanted to say that I wanted to continue to look at that issue. We aren't doing abatements on irrigation at the moment. Those are on hold till we figure out what we're going to do. Well, but I'll take some any advice. I just well, I think that uh, you know we could meet with the sewer commissioners and, and discuss this. Um, well, but I know what? that. Uh, the sorry, water commissioners, water commissioners. Yep. Yeah, you can tell what my brain's <laughs> and that uh, I, I've looked at this quite a bit over the last couple of years and it seems yep. that the water department is pretty consistent in when they the time of year that they do their uh, readings mm -hmm. but you know we have such a small department that any number of things can come up that you know keeps yep. them from their uh, job they might start the water reading and have a break and things get delayed or whatever Couple weeks or um, whatever yep. you know in short of hiring somebody to do it which would only add to the cost of it and make the rates yep. go up even more um, I I could be mistaken but I think we've only received maybe a dozen requests mm -hmm. over the last couple of years um, and it's mostly because people just get caught at the wrong time like you said they do um, so I, and I then they're know. and then their next you know their their summer bill is based on a kind of an inflated number so they feel sure. like they're kind of doubling that up so and if yeah. we raise the rate you know for sewer um, so I just thought it might be a time to look at it and you're right yeah. it may stay the right. same and and that's well, well and, and good but we just I just wanted to make sure we had a fair clear policy that we could send out to the public I'm and very appreciative that you yeah. um, looked into it so much Trevor. Well, that, I mean this has been consistent and I mean and the numbers have been relatively stable, but they're regular abatement requests. Mm -hmm. I, right. I think this is a way to handle it, maybe. Yeah, we'll cool. see what we can do. Okay. All right. Great. Is there anything else? Um, I just had one thing that I just wanted to say that um, West Nile disease um, continues to accelerate across the state with on the mosquitoes that we've been trapping. We've, there's quite a few mosquitoes with the rain and the heat. Um, so most human exposure comes in August and September. So it's very important that people, um, you know, try to avoid activity when the highest mosquito activity occurs, um, dusk to dawn, uh, wear long sleeves and pants or repellent. Um, and if you are having any summer flu, the majority of people, if they get West Nile disease, will not have any reaction. It's, it, but if you are suffering from a summer flu, the best thing to do is please go to your um, doctor and just make sure it's not West Nile disease because it is, it is treatable. Um, I believe that the state probably is going to raise the risk level tomorrow or, uh, here to moderate um, because of the activity level. It's not anything to panic about. It's not Triple E. There is no Triple E circulating at the moment. So we just have to be um, aware uh, and, and take precautions. Empty out all your saucers and watering pots and you know pots and stuff like that in your yard because it fills up every day with the rainstorms we've been having. So just police your yards and be careful. Good. Oh. What about the Green Communities Grant contract? Is that something we can? Yeah, um, as you know, we got we talked quite a bit sure. about it, and not not at your last meeting, the meeting before, we got this grant thanks to, in particular, David Gilbert Keith, and we just have the contract document to sign. Great. And they had so Carolyn's name on it. They told me I should just write your name on it. So. Okay. Is it just? Um, do you want a motion? Yeah, it's just to sign. A motion okay. to sign it. Make a motion to sign the Green Communities Grant. And I will second that. Is there any further discussion? Nope. And none. All those just, in favor? Aye. I just aye. want to thank them again. again. This is David, a huge, a huge yep, uh, thing for our community. town and our, yep. our elementary school. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be fantastic. It will cut our operating costs. The total amount is $166,082. And it's uh, all for um, projects at the elementary school and some funds for administrative costs. Mm -hmm. I don't quite know how those will be used, but I'm eager to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, would yeah. you like me to date this? Sure, okay. yes. 
Thank you. Uh, we could talk very briefly about the Conservation Commission, if you'd like. Sure. Uh, that's what I was going to do under my report. Okay. So we had a question about um, a, a, um, whether or not you could have alternates or associates. And um, we have a memo uh, from Council about that. You can. Uh, they can't be voting members. Um, the way to change that would be to, this is a summary of what's in there, um, would be to go have special, leg um, yes, a special act of the legislature passed on behalf of the town to, um, to officially add them as voting members. So in other words, if they went to all the meetings and someone was absent, they still couldn't vote? Correct. Oh. Yep. Hmm. Not unless, Re not unless we Did you go. read the memo? I did. Yeah. I read the memo. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I just. Um, do, you, do you want me to read the, this paragraph? Um, I, I, did, uh, you, or, I don't know if you read it all, but. I, I did. Um, I can't, so could we, do you guys want to do that? I mean, I, I kind of think that that's a good idea. Well, is there, there's still some question about the number anyways, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, I'll, I'll check on that okay. tomorrow. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So we'll continue that later? Yeah, we can okay. continue that on. You know, probably by our Thank next meeting we'll have, have an answer on the number as I well. I did a lot of work on that action myself. I know, yeah. And I said the towns were getting special acts just for this. You know. so um, other towns are? I don't know why this we, state just doesn't um, uh, amend you know, the statute to allow for that. I mean, right. it's a way of bringing people on and to learn about yeah. wetlands and no, all the And environment. it's also to have a full so. board all the time. And that's a zoning, right? Does well, that's right. That's, that's because it's in the statute. It's um, statute. And that's it's nothing got, that we can it's do It's very at specific town reasons. No. no. Um, I mean, you need town meeting to uh, authorize you to ask for the special legislation. Okay. We could then. sign the state primary warrant. Okay. Okay. I make a motion we sign the state primary mo um, warrant. Uh, second that motion. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 September 4th? Yes, September 4th is the primary, so if you all come out and vote, please. birthday cards that get passed around the office in the <laughs> folder and nobody knows what it is. Okay. When we bring the warrant in, we should bring this in. We can do this yes. kind of voice. Yep. I'm okay with that. Um, 7.15 well, we've now. We've got, yeah. Did you have a chance to talk with uh, town council about the, um, the lease as far as if something should happen to the organization? Okay, we have so many lease kind of things. Which this one are you talking about? I'm sorry. For scams. Out here. Yeah. I'm sorry? For scams. Scams. Um, uh, no. No. All right. That's a good answer. I, I guess I, what I didn't see in there was any sort of a clause if the organization uh, should, dissolve. should dissolve. Um, can, we take the the same, can we take the same language from um, the original? Remember we had all that research that we did um, in the last year, or two years ago? Remember? Jonathan yes, that's state? right. Yeah. In case, so which one got, you know, how many yeah. ambulances you got, how we would yeah, divvy how, up how stuff? We Should use we? the same language, we could just pop it in. Yeah, I think that would be smart. I mean, I, I'm I just don't always see it going anywhere. But, scenario, right. but if, if for some reason our town decided to be out of it, then they, they still, by the terms of this lease, would still be able to operate out of there. We would have no place. To. Right. So what we would do is just pop in that same language because we all agreed to that language. Yeah. Okay. So are you no, saying it was in there and it's now not in there? And this no, no, it was in no. the... It's uh, not uh, it's uh, in the... In a, a we, we had lawyers come up with a dissolution 
language. Okay. And we agreed upon it and we voted it. And so we could, if we use the same language, then we don't have to. Well, okay, I'll reinvent. We can research that. Where was that in? Was that in the? Uh, it was in we changing talking. the municipal agreement. Yeah, the, the agreement. Uh, yep. I think yep. it was in the agreement. Because John was wanting to have. It was in the original something. agreement, Wendy. I have a note when I speak with Lisa tomorrow. I'll yep. bring this up with her as well. Okay, great. Okay. All right. All right. It's uh, seven fifteen. So. We've got a hearing with the people from the Dumont project engineers from SVE in one development. If you folks would like to come forward. Come on up. Welcome. Hi, good evening, folks. I'm Eric Pagopian, uh, owner of the Dumont Company. And uh, this is my first opportunity to say hello. Yes, so, welcome. Hello, Wendy. We and I have spoken uh, many times on the telephone. Kept, we met once before. Yes. So uh, Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm um, very glad to happy. Be here. Uh, representing my business and uh, introducing <clears throat> the folks that uh, will be working with me to develop the site. Great. So just a, uh, a short uh, uh, introduction of myself and my business. I'm a uh, native uh, Massachusetts, if there's such a thing, <laughs> and uh, uh, entrepreneur uh, having had a business in Chicopee uh, that I sold in 2011. I purchased Dumont in 2016 and Hassey Savage in 2000. 17, and so uh, now I endeavor to combine these two businesses and expand here in Deerfield. Right. So um, I'm excited about the opportunity to do that, and, uh, uh, and so looking forward to making our uh, presentation to you folks about how we intend to go about uh, developing that property. So uh, to preface the, uh, the discussion, I just want to make sure that uh, you know, the understandings that I have uh, from the conversations that we've had and the proposal that I submitted to you folks, uh, you know, put that on the table. And that is that um, you've, uh, it was my understanding that we wanted to get this thing done as soon as possible, uh, construct a break ground as soon as possible. And so uh, the fact that we closed, I don't know, maybe a week ago Friday, uh, and we're up here uh, ready to, to uh, to uh, go forward is hopefully an indication of my uh, seriousness of how I intend to, to move forward uh, and grow our business and create jobs here in, in Deerfield. Um, my, uh, my offer on the property was uh, contingent upon and predicated upon the fact that we'd be able to develop um, our initial phase. This is a phase two, uh, two phase development. Uh, phase one is uh, approximately a 20,000 square foot uh, factory. Uh, that it consists of offices and warehousing and, and um, a, a precision machining facility. Uh, phase two would be an expansion of that facility at some later date as I grow my business. Uh, currently, we employ about 33 uh, highly skilled uh, folks. Uh, we intend to grow that, obviously, and, and uh, with the idea that we would double the size of our factory, um, we would uh, likely increase our employment uh, substantially as well. So, um, so again, uh, it's my anticipation that uh, by virtue of the fact that you've accepted my proposal to purchase the property, that you've also accepted the uh, uh, you know terms that I laid out in terms of uh, being able to develop that property. So, um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is I understand that uh, we have an expedited permitting uh, as a, uh, as it uh, goes along with this uh, facility. Uh, the way that that was explained to me was that uh, it was a two-week uh, turnaround on permitting uh, and that that permitting was going to be handled through the, um, the uh, town council. So, uh, so that's sort of you know, the, the genesis of why we're here and, and what my expectations are. My expectations are uh, to introduce uh, uh, One Development, uh, who's our uh, partner in uh, developing the property, and SVT, who's our engineer. Uh, so Tony's going to speak next uh, on behalf of the Dumont Company and Hassey Savage. Um, but uh, we obviously want to get started right away. And uh, time is money. So uh, for the well, sake of I, getting Well, I just want to correct you. It's, it's a two-part process. Okay. It's a site plan review, and then it's a special permitting process. But it, it is with the select board. Okay. So you know, it can be turned around relatively fast. Okay, so we, great, great. Yeah. Well, we without, talked about doing that combined. Dick, I don't know yeah. if you want to come up. Yeah, Dick do you want to? part of the conversation. Yeah. We talked about combining that into one process. Yes, sure. it will be, 
it can be run concurrently. But the okay. two weeks is a it public is hearing notice time, so. Okay. Hi, I'm Eric. Hi, Dick. Okay. Dick, can you just explain the expedited process Let's so just, so that we know that um, everyone okay. is clear on it? We have an expediting permitting process. Like she said, it's a two-step phase. One is for site plan approval, which includes uh, the stormwater, wastewater, drainage, and things of that nature, which Tony's already explained to you. I'm absolutely sure I had a conversation with him the other day. The second part is just a special permit, which will be your uh, things like your hours of operation, uh, your hazardous waste disposal, if any, and things like that. They're, they kind of absolutely overlap, but there are two separate issues, okay? So, and the 20,000 square feet and the 34,000 square feet to propose, you don't have to go through the 20,000, 34,000 at this moment, but if you don't, you'll have to go back, start all over again. And I would highly recommend you just do your plan for 20,000, do your 14,000. And Wendy has asked me to, can I say that, Wendy? Go right ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't want to speak out of turn. Yeah. Wendy has asked me to help file the paperwork so we get the correct filing for the zoning issues and site plan approval. So we don't, we dot every I and cross every T. So I'm available from the town standpoint to help you fill out the applications Great. and Thank get you. the proper paperwork. And, and just because you're getting the approval for your expansion doesn't mean you're out obligated to do it. It's just that it makes sense that way you're taking care of, um, yeah. you know, the drainage, the, you know, the whole site plan thing is just done and out of the way. And when you choose yeah. to do it, it's, it's okay. And the two week time frame is there needs to be advertising two weeks in advance. So it's, and you have to do the abutters. So we do the two weeks advertising, set the hearing date, and the board will have a, have a public hearing and the board will make a decision. They can make the decision that night or they can make the decision, they may need more information, might be extended a week or two, but I know you have a very anxious board to make sure, and that's mm -hmm. why Wendy wants me to help you do the paperwork so you don't wind up missing an item mm -hmm. when you come to the board. Not that I'm gonna tell you what to do with anything, mm -hmm. just this is what you knew at ABC. Make sort sure everything's a, filed. Coach. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a good term. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, my understanding, when I read that, uh, the type of business that you have is a, a business by right, but because your initial building is under the 30,000 square foot threshold, that's what requires the special permit. Don't really understand yeah. that, but that's what it says. Yeah. Uh, so. I would think that if the business is smaller, it would be yeah, less I, I affected by a special permit, mm -hmm. but- We, we live and die by rules, so. <laughs> the, the idea was we wanted to have a certain kind of business and, and it, Whatever. So ultimately, you'll be focused. all set to go. All set to go. I, I one guess way what the they other. want me to do is be able to point you in the direction for the person to take care of things, such as the sewer line hookup or something, or go to Kevin Scarborough, or things like that, or nature like that. So I'd be available to help track down people, coordinate Great. that. Great job. Yeah, but we do, you know, the, the two weeks has to do with the public hearing process. I have an application up to date one for you if you'd yeah. like it. Mm -hmm. um, the permit package, and because yeah. it's this is a little different than well, a lot of the things that come in under this, you might want to do it differently. Because, um, I filed applications with EPA and uh, planning board, but uh, I didn't know if there was a separate application no, for the uh, select the, board. So, no. um, well, actually, the the application you fill out for the planning board won't go to the planning board. Right. But it's the same information. Then. It is the exact okay. same information. All right. yeah. So that was one of my questions. Yeah. So, evening. Tony, just so. before you uh, get started, I, <laughs> I, I just want to go on record as saying that, uh, as it described in my uh, proposal to the town to purchase the property, we are a, uh, effectively a one-shift operation. Uh, so uh, our shift starts uh, roughly 7 a.m. Uh, and ends by 5 p.m. So. Uh, you know, that doesn't mean that, you know, periodically we're not there till 6.30, burning the midnight oil, so to speak, but, uh, but we, are, we are a one-shift operation, and, uh, and so I wasn't aware of a special permit for, 
for that, uh, you know, because I fell in the guidelines of right. that which you were seeking to mm -hmm. acquire for a business. Right. Yeah. So, uh, go ahead, Tony. Uh, could I ask how long the approval for the second phase would be good for? Is there a time limit I, on I, that? I, two years. Two years. Two years. Two years. Two years. Yeah. yeah. And it could be renewed if, if that yeah. happens. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. We can ask for extension if there's some circumstances, financial, whatever. Yep. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. it, yep. The idea is just, just that way it, it doesn't seem like there's anything you're missing. Everything is just organized and... And Understood. Yeah. It's very important to me uh, that we do this as soon as possible. I'm uh, doing a, uh, a 1031 exchange with a property that uh, I own in Chicopee. I have till until January 23rd to make to affect this 1031 exchange. So every day that it takes me to uh, break ground is a, a huge risk in terms of my ability to make that uh, exchange happen. And I'm counting on the tax deferral to add the jobs here in uh, mm -hmm. South Deerfield. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. My name is Tony Winseski. I'm a uh, senior engineer with SVE Associates in Brattleboro, Vermont, representing uh, Dumont. And um, also Gary Dayharsh and Derek Healy are with One Development. They are the builders and um, can really talk about the building construction if you have any questions. So without a formal submittal, we thought tonight we would just give a, a brief um, presentation of where we are today so sure. that you Great. can look and see how the development is progressing um, and uh, and maybe get some feedback so that when I work with my coach um, we get everything in and um, and every everything is is there so that we can have a very productive hearing and uh, hopefully get approval soon um, so as you know uh, a few weeks ago uh, um, they purchased parcel C which is uh, about uh, 2.87 acres in size, and um, this here is Sugarloaf Street, Merrigan Way, the uh, Town Highway Garage, and we're the parcel adjacent to that. And this yep. is the old tank field of the, of the pickle factory, that's where that's located. And um, um, so, as, as Eric was saying, the, the first phase of the development will be about 20,900 square feet. And then the second phase is 14,300 square feet. If you add those together, it exceeds the 30,000, which would meet the definition of uh, uh, expedited permitting project. Um, obviously, this is in the district, and it's manufacturing, and it, in our opinion, um, meets the performance standard. So it would be by right, um, as I read it, uh, in the, um, in the um, uh, zoning bylaw. The, um, along with the purchase here, there, there's a, a, an easement that allows us to extend Merrigan Way for access and utilities to the site, because our water and our uh, electrical dry utilities are going to come from Merrigan Way. Now, also, um, when we get into a little bit more, I'll show you some details. We have a couple options on sewer that we want to uh, just, just um, talk to you a little bit about. Um, so the existing site is, and I'll, I'll go to... Uh, probably flip between these two a little bit. The existing site, as you know, if you went out in Oxford uh, area, that it's very flat. Um, so the parcel is extremely flat, but it, it drains from, from east uh, to west, and there's a there's this pretty significant swale area on the map. I think they were doing that to protect the offsite owners because the water was going that way. So the way this drains, I don't have any of the old reports, but it looks to me as it captured the drainage. There's a cat, uh, catch basin here, and it um, drained up to a detention area um, that was constructed by them. And there's an outfall with a valve that goes to the brook. Now, since, as you saw in the VHB, when you, the town um, uh, commissioned those reports um, um, through the 433, in the 43D process, um, that has now been designated as a wetland. Um, so this, this with Blacksmith Brook, that's a perennial stream, so we have a 200-foot resource, and uh, wetlands associated with that, and a buffer zone, so uh, we'll be hopefully going in phase with Conservation Commission and also the Select Board um, to get approvals for that. So getting to the, the development and the site plan a little more in detail, we have an extension, off-site improvements at Merrigan Way. Our driveway will be here. 
Um, we have three loading docks. These two on the side are depressed. Okay, so they'll be four foot down, so it's an at grade with the, um, with the structure uh, at the top of the truck um, bed. This will be an at grade dock here. Um, and we have ADA parking, and right now we're showing 36 standard spaces to ADA. By the zoning code, we would probably need about 48. But our history and our, our client, we only need 36. We're going to show 36 and ask the board for a waiver on doing all that imperviousness if we don't need it. We have here dashed um, extra spaces that would meet that if we need to, and if we have to, we can gravel those. It just doesn't make sense to do that, in our opinion. We'll refer to the board if you'd like to see those all paid. We can do that. The other thing that we do here, we had conversations with the fire department about extending a gravel drive back here for emergency access to the other side of the building if you need to. But we can also use that for maintenance. Um, we've got some uh, HVAC equipment on pads outside. There's two of, two of those here, so we can um, uh, utilize that for that. But this is one large pad that when we go ahead and extend for phase two, that would just be cut short. Now, <clears throat> water will be extended. It's our understanding the town owns the water line. They put it in with the garage. Um, obviously, the water district owns the water, so we'll have to deal with both um, the town for the extension of the main, but also with uh, the water district for the water supply. So there'll be a connection fee and, and those things. But it's dropped off here. We will extend that. And we will bring two services into the building, one for fire, one for domestic use. Um, we're also going to place a hydrant out in front, added fire protection um, for the building. There will also be a 90s connection on the building for the sprinkler system. So uh, initial discussions with the fire department, that seems to be um, OK with that. Um, the site meets the setback requirements and the dimensional requirements in the expedited district. Um, we have the 25-foot setback. We have a building height that's less than 48 feet. And our lot coverage is um, the maximum you can have in the district is 80%. We're about 50% with full build-out. Now, that could change a little bit when we do parking for the additional area. But um, we see that there, there would be no problem with meeting that code. That, that one the original issue. Um, the, uh, we're going we're gonna to put in a few underground propane tanks, 2,000 gallon tanks, to serve um, heating and uh, other aspects in the building, um, dry utilities, uh, telephone, uh, internet, electricity will come via poles or underground along there and brought into the site. Sewer, uh, the last utility that I wanted to talk a little bit about. <clears throat> we have a couple of options. There's, it's our understanding, we had my survey, we had conversations with the superintendent, uh, his foreman, and someone else that, I don't know the name, forgive me, I know it when we do the public hearing, but has history on the, on the site. There's a sewer manhole that ties to the 21 interceptor. We've opened that. We're going to have to TV it to make sure it's fine for use. One of our options is to take it by gravity and make a tie to that. Now, we'd have to get a, an easement from our neighbors here to be able to do that. And it might work well with them um, uh, to do, do that because we could drop off a service for them to tie to that also. So those discussions um, are, are, are pending, and um, hopefully we'll work through something that, just because it'd be a gravity flow versus pumping. Our other option would be to pump up and tie into the manhole in front of the uh, highway, which I think is the way that it was initially uh, thought of because of the access easement and that when you sold the property and, 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 and uh, provided that easement. Uh, another thing that you might be concerned with is um, Solid waste, just a trash dumpster. Our dumpster is up in this corner here. A truck could, um, if it's back loading, can back up into there and then take off. If it's front loading, they would pull in, back up, drive in, back out, and leave. The extension of this and the throat of this, we need this fairly wide to be able to back the trailer trucks up. Probably three trailer trucks a week to bring in product, um, raw materials. Um, I believe it's FedEx, UPS, trucks UPS. that um, that take out materials. So, you know, uh, those are the smaller trucks, those, those are the... Uh, so, about three trucks a week is my understanding. 
Um, if we look at trips on this with uh, 30, say we have 36 parking spaces, you're looking at 72 trips in and out of day workers coming in and leaving two trips. Uh, the original studies had one of the scenarios was a, a very large industrial site and they were estimating about 10, 1,000, 50 trips a day. And even in that, it didn't trip any significant mitigation um, from that development where the mixed use tripped a lot, where there was a lot of us. Right. So from a traffic standpoint, this will have no effect based on those initial studies. Uh, for, um, the roof will be pitched from the north to the south because the owner is looking to put in solar on the roof at, at electrical. It's a wise um, idea, and so it's, it's something that can be set up for that. Um, with that, uh, like I said, there was an existing swale along the back. We're going to maintain that. We'll, we'll rework that a little bit because it's a, it's a good um, drainage pattern. You get treatment and so forth. But we're also going to put uh, an underground storm drain system back there just to make sure in the winter that, you know, in the spring uh, rains and frozen ground that we have a way to get the water in and get it over to the infiltration basin. The front is um, standard um, because it's parking area. Water will drain to keep some catch basins and um, because we're in the wellhead area for the well down at the district, um, all of the villages in that will have to run that because it's an impervious area for the water and sewer. Uh, uh, structure and then off to the infiltration basin. Um, so that's the drainage. Um, another important fact I think you might want to, uh, might be concerned with, and we, we looked at this and it, it really shows on um, this the amount of vegetation. There's an existing fence that I believe Oxford built years ago, and um, it's entirely on the property and it's actually very generous uh, in the areas. Uh, it, they must have done it without a survey because the, the fence goes quite a bit into the property here, but it's, it's so taken hold with vegetation and tall and the butters along the street are up to that area um, that that fence, in our opinion, should just stay. Our work is going to, we're going to keep that fence there. That screening, which is, 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 is very established, worked very well. So all our work will be inside of that fence. Um, and um, so our, our screening, we meet the setback requirements, the screening is, is really there uh, for the abutters on Thayer Street. And um, um, I think that would satisfy uh, any of the concerns for screening that you typically would get on a commercial and an industrial site. Um, I think that's really um, the um, site plan as we have it. Um, I'll turn it over to Gary. He can talk a little bit about the building and what that looks like. And, um, and then if you have questions, we can try to answer them. Um, uh, good evening. It's uh, Eric and Tony. He said, my name is Gary Day Harsh. I'm with One Development out of Westfield and will be the uh, designers and contractors for the building. So, um, one thing I want to elaborate on, um, the, the, they uh, generate um, two things basically, uh, scrap metal which is still very valuable even though it's scrap and that's going to be stored inside the building and hauled away by a contracted hauler and then there are uh, some cutting fluids that are residual and, and put in containers and those are hauled away by a contractor as well so there's no waste at all that'll be uh, generated and, and dumped outside or anything like that. Excuse me sir, I, I don't mean to interrupt but could yeah. you speak as loud as you could or get closer to a mic because the I people will. at home okay, can't right. hear yep. yeah. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> all right. I'll just speak louder. Okay. okay. You can all almost right. yell. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Very good. So uh, should I repeat that or are you good? No, that's okay. good. Oh, well, I think it's important to say very clearly that there is no, um, you know, there's all your cutting um, and and your fluids are collected and they're they're going to be trucked away. They're not outside. I think that's yeah. worth yeah. repeating. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'll just chime in and say that we have a recycling uh, capability on site uh, existing at Dumont and Greenfield that would be transferred to this new facility. So we re we have. Uh, 90% water-based uh, water-soluble uh, coolants that we use in our equipment. 
Um, they do get tramp oil from the machines in them, so we have a recycling uh, capability in-house where we separate the uh, oil from the, uh, from the water and water-based coolant. So, but uh, in any event, uh, as Gary said, that all that material will be stored uh, in-house, in, in the building, uh, and transferred to uh, responsible uh, certified uh, haulers of both uh, the uh, scrap chip material uh, for uh, the cuttings and so forth, as well as uh, any uh, you know generation of um, you know uh, oils or waste uh, coolant. And could I just ask um, what you produce? What 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 is your company? <laughs> Sorry, you I, I guess I should have. <laughs> no, left that's with okay. That. Just... Uh, so we are a manufacturer of uh, industrial cutting tools. Greenfield uh, has historically been known as uh, sort of the capital of. Uh, of cutting tools yeah. uh, back from the Civil War uh, period. Uh, sadly, that doesn't exist any longer uh, on a large scale. However, we do have uh, Kenna Metal uh, in Greenfield and uh, the Dumont Company, which are the two remaining uh, businesses in the area. Uh, that being said, uh, so we manufacture uh, uh, a tool called a brooch, which is a, a linear cutting tool that uh, cuts a slot in uh, metal of okay. some kind. So uh, I was, it, it was explained to me like a boring. Or so uh, you know, if you're familiar with a drill, yeah. a drill uh, uh, rotates and right. it cuts yep. uh, with a rotating uh, pattern. A uh, brooch, and I suppose I should have brought some uh, some uh, show and tell. But a brooch is something that cuts in a linear fashion. So you push it or pull it through uh, the component, and it, uh, it instead of cutting a round feature, it cuts a square feature oh. or a okay. hex or a rect, uh, sure. you know, a, a triangle or whatever shape you make the brooch. Uh, that's what it transferred right. to. Uh, okay. in, into the finished part. I was trying to explain That's helpful. it. Yeah, it's like, not a brooch. Don't. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, but Dumont uh, and Hassey Savage now combine. Uh, we're the by far the world's leader in this uh, capability. It's a very sort of uh, traditional parochial cutting uh, capability, uh, but it's used on the entire planet, and uh, we are, you know, most likely eighty-five to ninety percent of the supply uh, on the entire uh, globe. Wow. So, wow. Uh, right That's here awesome. in, in That's very exciting. Cool. Thanks. Thank you for the history of it. Appreciate it. Yeah. to his statement. <laughs> He's in the business to make tools that make holes. Gotcha. Uh, that's that a works. simple explanation. They make <laughs> <works>. holes <laughs> of all different shapes. As said by my coach. <laughs> <laughs> that's helpful. Thank you. Okay, good. All right. Uh, so the building will be a uh, Butler building. It's going to, on the uh, north side, will be the loading docks. And as Tony mentioned, there's a drive in door at grade here, a dock height door in the middle, and then a drive in door up above. And the reason why there's a drive in door here is this is the area where there will be storage in the building, things that are not kept on the floor of the factory. Okay. Um, it'll be a combination of masonry and insulated metal panel, and they've selected a, a sandwich panel. So it's relatively flat panel. It's got a foam core, metal on the inside, very well, uh, and very energy efficient, also very uh, sound uh, deadening. So uh, we don't expect anybody to hear what's going on inside the building. Uh, there will be some windows, and those will be tinted. Uh, the entrance to the office is here. The building is about 21 feet tall, and uh, it does pitch to the south. So this is what you'll see from the front. You really won't see the, the roof at all. Um, and uh, Dumont is evaluating this idea of putting solar on the entire roof. Wow. And uh, if, if they do that, they can generate enough power for their own use. So, wow. And the way that works is you sell it to the power company, and then you buy it back. So, uh, so that's what we're looking at right now. So from the uh, north side, I'm sorry, no, from the uh, east side, you would possibly see solar panels about four feet high lining the roof here, but we haven't shown those yet. So. Um, and then the, the other three sides of the building are the same metal panel that we talked about. Uh, there's a few windows here in the office area, but the rest of the building is, um, does not have windows. Should be uh, very tight, very quiet. And there's 
a floor plan again that shows so this is the south this is the north uh, east and west so the main entrance the office area employee functions bathrooms locker rooms cafeteria and things and then the open uh, plant area and you can see the two storage rooms that are there for the uh, scrap and, and anything else that they want to store Colors are going to be uh, grays. They'll be light gray on the siding and two tones of darker gray masonry on the front. That's it. I don't know if you have any questions. Um, well, when you go through this um, site plan review process with us, um, you've answered a major question on screening. I think that's lovely. I think that was um, people were worried about your screening, so that's wonderful that you are willing to keep the fence and the current screening. Um, lighting is always an issue. So, you know, we'd be very appreciative of down lighting and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Um, one of the things I would love you to consider, it's not mandatory, but um, it would certainly be wonderful, is to have pervious surface for your parking. I realize you probably would want asphalt for where you come up to the loading docks but um, if you did pervious surface, they, they have such good products now on the market for long term and hopefully you will, will be long term, so um, that would be wonderful. Um, and uh, I just had a question on the sewer load, so it would just be like um, bathrooms, regular yes. bathrooms, right? Right. Okay, absolutely yep. no problem. Very light, yep. So it, it's, it would be similar to a site plan coming to us, just like you would do for anybody else, but um, we're open to having you present to us with your plans, and we're very excited. Great. I'm I'm very excited. We work so hard to have local good businesses, and so I'm really looking forward to having you come. So Great. thank you. Well, my wife is here. Her name is Daryl, and uh, she and I are excited to be members of the community. Here. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Well, that's really uh, I, I, I I would like to add one uh, one more thing, and. Uh, you know, I just want to make mention of the fact that we're 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 uh, you know taking extra measures to make sure that we don't uh, put anything outside of the building. Uh, so we're adding, we've added space at our expense to store uh, you know uh, waste materials indoors, uh, scrap metal, and so forth for. Uh, really to keep the place uh, neat and tidy looking, uh, not only for uh, our neighbors, but frankly, for our business, and uh, you know, it's important to us. We, our customers are, uh, you know, are global. So we have customers coming from Switzerland and France and Germany and Italy. Uh, we have customers. Uh, you know, MSC is the largest industrial supply uh, distributor in the United States. Hoffman in, in Germany and Europe. Um, so our plant has to look spotless, uh, yeah. inside and out. Yeah. Um, I would hope that we can count on the town to uh, clean up the mess, frankly, that is next door to the highway department yard. It's unsightly and uh, it's, it's not within the uh, acceptable zone of our business. We will. Thank you. We can do it. I just want to say that we may need a, to schedule a special meeting to accommodate the quick timetable you'd like to get this done. Um, because we've got to have it two weeks. It has to be published at least two weeks before the date of the hearing. And you need to get a butters list and all of that, so. Um, one question. Mm -hmm. um, typically, we would do a development. We'd have to be before the planning board because they're the special permit granting authority for drainage. In this case, because it's expedited permitting, you will we approve do that. We do everything. We do okay. The Terrific. idea is, you know, if, if there was a good company and a good proposal, then we'll go for it. Okay. Very good. Yeah, well, we'll make sure that gets um, submitted. So if you want, we can schedule our meeting. Yeah. When did you want to do that? When do you? Uh, I think we have to make the application, and yeah. then you will, when do you schedule that? Is that yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about how quickly and yeah. We can, we can schedule a meeting within 48 hours. So okay. if you get all your paperwork in and it gets published, then we can set the date um, with no problem. Okay. We have to put the have date to the, in yeah, the paper. 14 days prior to the hearing, you have right. to 
for today. Right. Right. Going to be advertising the paper. No, no. I meant get, we can meet at well, in forty. Do, but yes, but these guys to keep them on track. There are fourteen yes. days publication in the newspapers and a butter notification. Mm -hmm. Butter yep. notification. Exactly. Yep. You know, I would uh, say make it from you know at least Monday, yeah. to fourteen days, just be, in terms of the timing. You're only going to be two or three days off yeah. from you know, like today tomorrow. You only need a couple of days off. I'm sure Tony will get all that paperwork together. Well, what I, I mean, obviously, we've worked with Dick before, so yeah, what we'll do we is I'll, I'll get all the paperwork together, get the applications filled out. I'll come and sit with Dick, walk through that with him, and make sure that he's comfortable with all yeah. of the information. Um, and um, at that point, then he can tell you. Um, yeah. To then I'll, schedule. Then I'll, we'll, we'll turn it over to Wendy then, yeah. so she can. Th then you can schedule. Um, so she can schedule I, it. I would say, based on that, that there should be no issue having that last week in August as a meeting date, any time. Right. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bruce? Uh, yes, Bruce, Hunter, uh, resident. I have just a couple of questions. Uh, my first question is, uh, what are the options for the So uh, we are not having any roof-mounted uh, equipment. It will be ground-mounted, just like you would have uh, on a residential home that had air conditioning, but it would be a larger unit, obviously. And there'll be two of them. Uh, one would be uh, in this corner of the building, and the other one would be here. So I can show you. Uh, uh, you could probably see right on the site plan. Okay. Oh, you can do it there. Yeah, yeah that's right. So we're, we're planning to put one of the units here and one of the units on this end. Uh, we are leaving the roof free for the solar panels. And uh, those units will provide the ventilation as well, so uh, there won't be any exhaust fans or anything like that in the walls. Any noise continuation on those units? So they're similar to what you would hear if you had a air conditioning unit ground mounted on your home. Uh, and uh, You'll provide that data. We will. A cut sheet on that, yeah. 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 Uh, will it be lighting in the parking lot? Yes, there is, and actually it's shown on the site plan. I didn't get into that. We have two, two parking light standards, double shoebox LED downcast in the parking area, and the other ones are wall packs um, on the building. And those are, those are down lights as well. Building lights along the way Excuse me? Building lights along the way They'll be on uh, all night for safety. Yeah. So we'll have a um, lighting plan. I already asked for that, Bruce. Will it also be assigned? There will. We haven't um, we haven't come up with that. There'll be a, uh, a definitely a sign to it. Um, I think we. I'll just say that um, at this point, it'll meet the zoning bylaw. We haven't come up with that yet. Yeah, the plan right now is for a sign on the building. Um, I think uh, Dumont would like to entertain uh, the idea of maybe some sort of a directory sign out at the uh, main road that would address. The town facility as well as theirs and the, the bakery. Yep, we um, just parking um, also requires a special permit. Induction parking space. We can handle that with the yeah. special permit. Yep. And then my last question is: I heard there was a tax deferral for the property. So just wondering how many years was, was that uh, tax deferral? Uh, you know, people. Yep. We haven't met on that yet. I don't know if they've had conversations with the assessors or not. Not yet. Okay. You're requesting Absolutely. Full 100 Yes. For so many years? It will address that when we address it. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else? Good. Nothing here. Good. Thank, thank you very much. Get yourself your thank paperwork you. together and work thank with Dick. You. And, uh, I'll talk to you. Get the thank you very much, folks. Thank, thank you. Thank well, you. It was really nice to Host agreement? Yep.
Did you have a chance to read all of this? Yes. Um, the only thing uh, on the host agreement, the only thing that um, just need to correct, and we might have to go back to the lawyers, is a schedule of payment. It's upon receiving the license, the company shall make the initial. Can you speak into the microphone? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. We're talking about the host agreement. Um, the schedule of payments, upon receiving the license, the company shall have an additional payment of 25000 The quarterly CIP, CI payments shall be due 15 days of quarter of 14 right. months. So that's correct. Can, can just, I come? Uh, I have some yeah, comments from please. council as well, sure. which okay. might be the same. Um, okay. You yep. know what you're talking about? Do All you right. want to hear those now? Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. Um, so just to clarify, and you know this, this is just for cultivation. Retail agreement would um, have to stipulate that the parties are aware there, that there can only be one retailer and, you know, so um, the amount of the fee is negotiable, and this amount is simply the amount that we have in here is a, a considered a placeholder until you negotiate through that. Um, uh, she said she wasn't sure about the timing, whether 15 days is sufficient to allow the company to figure out gross sales. So, again, that's negotiable. Um, mm -hmm. And what she did with the sample we got to her um, was... She tried to include the 14-month payment delay, but she wanted to normalize the payments on the quarter, so it will be yep. a bit more than 14 months. Yep, uh, that's fine. Because I think it is difficult to payments due on a, on a strange date in the middle of the quarter. Right. It? Okay. Yep. Um, and, uh, again, um, back to town costs and the gift provision, you need, we really need to make sure we stay within the CCC guidelines on that. Mm -hmm. So, um, And you've got that, and I can give them to you again. Okay. Um, right. What I wanted to do was just make sure it was okay with everybody and then move on to the um, dispensary um, agreement and the, a couple things that I wanted to add and I just, add we to can a use. Dispensary? Can I, yeah. I just oh. had a question on this one first. Oh, yeah. okay. Go ahead. Because what so I was going to say, we want to work off this one as a, template. As a base. Yep, yep. Yeah. So my question was um, a couple of things. When it said the payments, um, and, and this just could be my ignorance, but it said um, above shall be in, a, in the amount of 2% of gross wholesale receipts to other registered marijuana establishments. No, we had just um, in, our, in our just gross wholesale receipts, period. Not to yeah. other, right? Not to others. Right, yeah. because we whether they purchase it or somebody else. Right. Well, that was my whole point. Back, exactly. Back That's right. what I thought. You can, okay. no, this, exactly. this is like B? B, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We just eliminated that. It okay. was supposed to be period after receipts. Yeah. And, and even that, if you think about it, if somebody grows and, and they oh, yeah. pick a number, if they sell $2,000 a pound uh, to Johnny's, you know, uh, marijuana shop, you know, they're making money at that point. So where's the value come to what they're using in their own place? You know, that's, that's going to be a tricky um, mm -hmm. thing. But so, so yeah, I just wanted to make sure it was like we were yeah. capturing when they grow and they sell so, to themselves so, right. and then also to wherever. Right. Is, I it, just, both, that's why is we're it the last just, sentence as well or are you stopping? Um, let's we're, just, we're just going to say period. To, we're eliminating two other registered marijuana establishments. And received. then what about the next sentence? Um, See, gross wholesale receipts means means the aggregate mm -hmm. purchase price paid by, by other by any uh, by any. I, I would I would say yep. by any registered marijuana establishments, but before sales, uh, excise and other taxes. Um, any. Any of the state, any of the yeah, any, any, any any anywhere, anywhere. meaning anywhere. themselves themselves any other, like when they sell it. Does period. it work for all of you? Any works for all yeah. of you? Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense though? I mean, I don't want to put it in if it. No, no it does okay. because your, you you don't want to stipulate the fact that you know they don't have to pay it for their own. Right. Set. That was the whole idea. That's the whole idea. Yeah. So what I wanted to do was to take this basic template and make it into dispensary template. But I wanted to include what I'm really concerned well, about. Let's we finish with oh, oh, got one oh, more oh, as well. I'm sorry. You're going too fast. <laughs> I know. Right. You're jumping I'm, on the I'm next. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure that we no, get We'll catch him. Um, okay. My other one, one question was documentation and confidentiality the company may provide, shall provide? Um, it sh um, or is this, I, I was. Well, this was if we wanted it. It's not something that we shouldn't. 
we shouldn't collect information just to collect information. If Correct. We, I, I'm so just wondering how, so how do we know? If the town requests? Yes. It yeah. would be our request. If, if any information we want, yeah, we I mean, get it. I don't know how they calculate it and who does it. I just wanted to be able yeah. to make sure that we're yeah. getting true documents. Right. right. But that was why I wanted the confidentiality thing in. So right. it, yeah, if we, we don't want chose to hunt, get detailed information, then it should be confidential. Absolutely. Right. Right. Absolutely. We would not share. I just wanted to make sure that right. we had some basis for judging that dollar amount on. Yeah. That oh, was yeah. accurate. And that's what I mean. Any so documentation that we... Yeah, well, any documentation we request should if, be... If requested. If shall, requested. If requested. Yeah. Well, there, there was a lot of concerns I had about a lot of these issues of payments, the value, and everything like that. But, you know, through the conversations we've had about, you know, the full disclosure of the whole industry and the state watching and stuff like that, I, I guess it's, it's just it's made me comfortable. Pretty, yeah, you yeah, do to, feel... To, to, that it's, it's going to be uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree. Yeah. I think it's right. Okay. And that's all yeah. I had. So all right. All you had. Well, so then what I wanted to do was to take this basic one. Yep. Um, but I, my, my concern was that um, and there's nowhere in here that, um, that we have to deal with our fire districts. And so what I wanted to add was a section um, for a $5,000 payment to both of our fire districts and our South County EMS. And then what I wanted to make sure we did um, you know, so number one, just like our $25,000 upfront payment, when they get the license, they give the district 5,000, each district, Deerfield and Old Deer, um, South Deerfield, and the SCEMS um, $5,000 payment. But I also wanted to write language, and I haven't been able to find language because when I called the fire marshal um, office, apparently I have been the only one in the whole state that had any discussion about this. So. Um, He's going to work with me. He was wonderful. I had long, long conversations with him. He's, he's going to help me work up how to do um, a cost. You know, so you do the $5,000 payment, and then you write in that if there's any training that's necessary, but also gear replacement. And the reason why this gear replacement is a huge thing is because, um, well, first off, you might need, like, carbon dioxide detectors because they have extra carbon dioxide to grow the plants better. So that might be something that our districts need. But um, this gear replacement is actually very serious because um, if they respond to an event at the marijuana facilities, they might get trace THC on their gear. And um, say you're a truck driver or you're... Um, some other, have some other thing where you get Definitely. drug tested, mm -hmm. you might be exposed to it. So, and, and they can't come up with a way that guarantees 100% cleaning of the gear. So that could be a huge financial burden to our fire districts and our um, South County EMS if, say, you had someone faint and you go in and you get on our stretcher, some, you know, THC on our stretchers, or if you, their fire gear gets, you know, their uniform equipment gets, uh, air packs get contaminated. So we want to be able to write in this agreement that the fire districts get $5,000 just up front to cover keeping on top of whatever's out there for training, organizing stuff, orga you know, making sure they're doing site visits, on-site training, whatever. But then we do this gear replacement and any kind of equip specialized equipment like respirators or whatever. Does that make sense to you guys? They're pondering. I'm um, pondering. <laughs> I, I, I guess I just don't know. I don't know either. I can talk about with council again tomorrow. I, I'm open uh, to it uh, because I, I agree. I don't. I don't want. Our I, well, I feel like the fire. Why should the fire districts be responsible for but that? But I, I would be interested to see what the fire department thought and. and well, learn uh, more about what the yeah apparently the it just this, nobody else thought nobody about has it. thought about it and so the guy was really impressed and mm -hmm. we had this huge long dialogue of all the stuff that could happen and why it's so important to replace gear if if there's an exposure because you're 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 so you're, you're just saying that if the, the exposures to the equipment then the individuals could 
get it on them. They could and get it on them, and then if they were drug tested the next day, they could have it show an exposure. So the <laughs> cleaning of the equipment is very important. So if you can't clean the equipment well, then you have to be able to replace it. And that, to me, is a huge financial burden on our fire districts so, or our EMS. So we, we need to make sure that that's a covered expense. And that is a payments to groups that are not covered normally under our host agreement because right. we're not, a di you know, we can't collect money and then give it to the districts. Correct. So yeah, there can't be a flow of cash. So there, no. there should, in our host agreement, we needed to add, or I wanted to add something for our fire districts and our EMS that should they have this issue, that They'd we address it somehow. I hadn't thought of it, so. Well, I, I was worried about it, but then I, when I talked to the fire marshal, like I said, the fire marshal's office, it was, it was like, oh, my God, I didn't even think about that. I was thinking right. about training. Right. As originally, I said, well, is there any well, training? What's the cost of that kind of thing? It's all and burning then, and you have to go in. During the course of the conversation, he said, well, actually, one of the things is a real concern is this THC exposure and, and how it might affect the person that's volunteering or that's responding. And that you know, somehow we have to, well, I feel mm -hmm. obligated to, to cover that some, mm -hmm. at some point. So okay. I want to work on that. Okay. But there's no but model I, for that. Right. Is there any information to say that this is, is a problem? I mean, I guess we can't because we, it's all very new. No, it's but too new. Well, we could, I guess what new. I think about is, you know, with paramedics and we'll stuff, they go into, you I'll know, somebody who's tomorrow, ill so and they could have diseases or, you know, they're sick or vomiting or whatever. Uh, you know, they wash their clothes. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't no, know. I'm not Does saying you can't not clean. wash out of clothes. I, I don't well, know. deal with, um, like, I don't know. you know, when you go, I don't know if you just said this, but into a uh, meth lab. Well, see, I went to the meth lab training with Dick and, um, you know, how to identify, like, sep <laughs> septic. Sep I'm just wondering, it's similar. No, 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 you, no but, you know, like, how do you identify septic, septic, um, feel, you know, septic, doing septic inspections and how you identify a, a meth lab at doing a, a septic inspection and then how you're supposed to protect yourself going into the meth lab. And it's, it's actually very serious. And that's what got me talk, thinking about this when the, I was talking to this guy and it was like we had this conversation and just ended up being, at, you know, a couple hour conversation back and forth. And it was like, oh my God, this is like really serious and we should be addressed. That. Do you believe she talked for a couple I hours? believe that. Hey, the guy was really interesting. No, it is. He was, he was impressed that we Thank even called, that someone called. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, but I felt like we should somehow, we need to incorporate our fire districts in here. So and when I, do you talk to Lisa about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Just so is more. that okay with you guys that I move forward with that? I, I would like, yeah, I'd like yeah. to see the we'll final. We'll get the baseline overture. information. Okay. Yeah. Bring well, it back yeah, to we have, board. I mean, I, I don't know how to do it yet. Of course. Yet, but yep. Because that, um, and then the other thing, um, uh, I talked to, uh, left a message with Cheryl Sabara. Um, there is a actual Board of Health um, class with Cheryl Sabara. She's the legal person for the Mass Association of um, Health Officers. She's doing it next month. But the, one of the things I wanted to somehow put in our agreement, but then I was thinking maybe it's just too picky uni and we need to put that in as sort of like part of the Board of Health regulations that would be separate from the host agreement. But if, if we're selling edibles, it's assumed that we would do, you know, a food inspection or that we'd mm -hmm. have standards sim similar for food establishments. No problem with that. That's pretty straightforward. But one of the things that has come up and the only place that has this so far that I've been able to find is Montague. They actually, if you go in and get an edible, say a brownie, mm -hmm. you have to come in with some kind of container that is lockable so you put your brownie in a lockable container and then go out so that you're not just having it in cling, cling wrap and go out, put it in your car, and then some Kids kid eats, eats the brownie and is exposed to the marijuana. So That seems like that is Board of Health stuff. That I, I, I mean, like in health regulations, not I was thinking of, not well, should this be under security? Should we require it? And then I thought, no, that should be a Board of Health Board thing. Of health so I just want to make sure. I think sure. it's in the CCC regulations. Right. It's very, very, yeah. very detailed. detailed so. Yeah, but they don't address but, it. They don't address that you can pick up your stuff. The only, per, the only place that has that so far is Montague. In and their I regs or in their agreement? I have a copy of their agreement. It's no, pretty, it's in their regs. Yeah. And the... Um, 
Um, so, so I called <coughs> Cheryl to find out is it would just is that a, like a standard board of health thing and she, you know she was on vacation I think so um, I wanted to. So you're going to check on that. I wanted to follow up on that because that was the only other thing, and then um, I, I mean, as far as I can tell, the only issues I mean they use propane and butane and. I mean, that's just kind of standard stuff. So I, I, I didn't find anything else. So we could move ahead on the dispensary if you're okay about the, mm -hmm. you know, districts, okay? Can I, 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 have I don't a, see that it's a bad thing. I just, it, as long as it's not gonna create a, an issue or a red flag that, you know, we're, we're taking advantage of the situation. Mm -hmm. you know? I don't think so because mm -hmm. I, I feel like there's a true exposure to Oh, yeah. The districts, the fire districts, could incur huge costs, yep. and and this protects them. This, is, I mean, they might never respond, so there would not be an issue. Yeah, right. I think or if we just need to find out if we can do that. Do that. Um, yeah. 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 Well, no, I, I know a different I, entity. Right. You know, we may. I'm just gonna. Yep. It's yeah. It's worth checking out. Okay. Okay. So that that's um, pretty much it. All right. So, so do you, are we discussing tonight the? Dispensary one, or are we leaving that to another? Oh no, I'm going to give. I'm going to work. Well, You're going to work it up and bring yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. All right, I couldn't. Fine. I couldn't really move ahead on the dispensary one until we sorted out the. I mean, I felt it was important to do the districts, mm -hmm. fire districts. Well, well, getting back to the, uh, the cultivation one. Yep. Um, if, with those small changes, are we in agreement that it's? Uh, mm -hmm. Want to go forward with this and? You'll run it yep. by Lisa and. Actually. Kate is the one who's okay. the point person, okay. but I, I, I'll be talking to Lisa, so. Um, I'm okay Yeah, with just that. that issue about um, had town costs. That. We just have to, you know, when we get to that and in negotiation. Had, what? Um, you had some stuff needs to be filled in. Right. Some other, like, housekeeping stuff, right? Well, it's basically oh. the name. <laughs> right. The know, name and the other one is wherever. the name of the who we contract with. Oh, here. gotcha, gotcha. Um, and if you would look at six, and yeah, um, I've got that highlighted. So if an F I don't understand that. Can you explain that a little, Wendy? Um, it looks like How, I mean, can you plate. give me an example of an adverse? I guess it leaves an out for either party if... Um, if for some reason it's... You would then just come to terms, negotiate yeah, but, a... Yeah, it allows you to, to re, you know, to claim this and say, we, I'd like to renegotiate something. That's the way I read it, but yeah, I can, can ask for a clarification. Well, if they say yeah. it's too much money... You know, yeah. if they say they can't afford it, they just come back and say, well, you know, this is really affecting our think, bottom line. I don't think that's there because we've got the other one right. about the money thing, Ex yeah, payment in excess of town costs. Yeah. Um, but if there was maybe somebody else's lawyer found something. I, I, will, I will also ask about that. Okay. But otherwise, I'm fine with it. Do you want to make a motion Do we have, and, and so in... I just wanted to go over this real quick again. The um, community support and additional obligations um, to the extent such a such practice and um, I'll just read this for a second instead of out loud. Uh, what number? I was reading two, two. community support additional oh, obligations. I was just trying to figure out um, If requested by the town, the company shall assist the town with uh, participate in or contribute to community educational programs on public health and drug abuse prevention. I think I thought that was kind of going to be. Is that going to be tackled in the dispensary one? Not so much the. Yeah, but I I, I think part of our payments, it's assumed that they are going to be going used towards for that. education. Right. I just want to make sure that that yeah. was zeroed yeah. in on because that's important to me to. Yeah, it's, and, a, it's my absolute number one priority. Yep. Okay. 
then I think it's but good for But that's why I felt it was important to be in the cultivation. Any, but anybody who but wants to do anything. Part of the money we receive, you know, we'll have control and we can spend it on the education right. thing. Right. So, I mean, it's a bit redundant but that we request them to, yeah, to do if, the same if, thing. If but it's, it's a, okay. There was some yeah, other special big, event or something yeah. like yeah, that? Yeah, I, I get mean, it. We'd can, ask. Okay. Or you have them support, yeah. you know. I get it. Whatever. It's good. I don't know. I, I just feel it's important. It was a good thing do to you, throw in. Do you want us to vote on this? I, I think we should do it. You can just uh, make the changes. Yeah. Or do you want to wait till I, we get I corrected? Make, I make a motion that we approve oh. this um, based on the changes okay, that we've we talked go. Okay. Can we change this? That's fine. Can we, can we wait and vote when we have a solid one? Look at each other. <laughs> I, well, no, I'm asking. I'm asking. You can, from you. but we you can. may decide. I, you know. Yeah. No, but if we're good with it, in, 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 in total. In total. Mm -hmm. And make sure that it's all the words in. Yes. I don't care. It's just if we're if we're well, they can proceed with the other parts of the application, the you know uh, establishments, cultivation establishments can start proceeding. You know, with the other. Permitting I would and like all of to that, vote so. to approve it and then um, subject to everybody signing off. I don't want to wait two more weeks, Trevor. Well, we don't have to wait two weeks. I mean, she can she can get all the corrections made and we'll have a clean document early next week. Are we going to meet next Wednesday? I mean, we can. Um, we already have a meeting here. That's Thursday. Oh, what's the Wednesday? Um, Mima's. I, I reserve the space for Mima. What time? Six to eight. He's rolling out the um, emergency grants. Oh. Um, so really, I, we have. I just feel weird voting on something that's not. No, it's yet. yeah, but it, you're not gonna releasing it until you okay the whole thing, based on the change. We're we're voting it well, with the changes, and that it's not gonna be released unless if you have a chance to look at the whole thing. We just don't have to re-vote it. Pending council's uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good with pending council's approval and, yeah. and, and us reviewing it. Yeah. So just, do you want to vote on it? Or? I'd rather not, but if you, if you guys want it. I do. I want to move it on to the next one. OK. And so then if, I could, if we can get this done and approved, then I can start substituting the well, since we since we all agree on everything, you can still for, do that because right. we're what? How many, you're quite down the road on this, so why not go ahead anyway? Yeah. Okay. This doesn't well, wouldn't keep you from doing right. well, that. Well, I want to make sure that we this is right. have, have this approved. Okay. Why don't you make a motion to accept it with the amendments that we put forward to the council? I make a motion that we accept this and approve this based on uh, council's review and our changes. Do you second. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So what I'm going to do is I will take this as a rough draft when I get Lisa finishes this, and then I will have Wendy forward. To me and to, you. And oh, well, yes, for this. But then I'm going to take this and do the substitute all the dispensary stuff in here, Thanks. and then we'll look, look at this for the next meeting, okay? Mm -hmm. yep. a, a rough draft that will go to the, that we'll look at, approve, and go to lawyers. Okay. Okay, for mm -hmm. the following. So we should have this done by September, mid-September. I just want to make sure. Do you guys have? Wait. Okay. Because we, we have a meeting. We have a meeting on the 22nd. So this, I will have the rough draft available on the 22nd. Okay. Right okay. okay. And then we can I send that to Lisa. She changed it to make it work. Oh, okay. All right. That's and fine. And um, so um, she'll send it to Lisa so yeah. we can have this ready for the 5th. Okay. 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 Then we can vote it right. on the 5th um, as the final draft or, in, or any changes. So it will either be ready the 5th or the 19th. Okay. Depending on the information. I, I mean, I might not be able to sort out the, the district thing yet, but I, I, I feel like that that's really important. So You're talking about the uh, retail or yes. the, the medical? The, the okay. medical dispensary. Okay. Okay? All right. 
All right. Let's move on to the congregational church. What's mm. so what we are you have doing a, with that? A motion. The um, probate court has passed on. I'm not sure what they did. It's approved, and so we've right. got um, a motion for you to make. And um. I will be getting and and the motion. Does this ask for you to yes? And I expect to get tomorrow the signed deed agreements from the attorney for the church. And um, hopefully, um, if you do approve this, you can come in and sign it, and we can get okay. it registered at the registry. I'll have to get certification of votes. When do you need it signed? From sign the meeting what? minutes and when also do you, when from do you, the annual town meeting minutes. When will you have it ready for us to sign? Only, only the chair, if you... Oh, okay. Do you want me to read this? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. okay. Motion. I hereby move, pursuant yes, to a vote on the April 24, 2017, annual town meeting, Article 22, the select board, accept the gift of real property with the buildings thereon situated, namely that which is located at 71 North Main Street, South Deerfield, including 0 .550 acres, more or less, from the Congregational Church of South Deerfield, and further to authorize the chair to enter into any agreements related to the receipt of the gift as may be determined to be necessary to effectuate, effectuate I'm not even looking. <laughs> <laughs> the transfer of the same to the town. Right. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you need a signature here? No. Um, yes, okay. actually, um, because we will have the certified um, Do you want us to sign this one? Or they said you were going to prepare something? No, that, that's the same thing. I think, so. And then okay. Carolyn seconds. I think oh. she seconded. Why well, don't you sign okay. two? I don't know. It's you want to sign two? Okay. Yeah. You we have to have it certified. We have to have the minutes certified. Um, and we have Maybe to have the sure. town Not meeting minutes done? certified. So. Uh, I think just two, right? Just two? Two what? You yeah. just need two of those? Yeah. I, I think I only needed one, but let's just. just have two. Yeah. Yep. They're all over the place. <laughs> Is that an extra? Yeah. Put it in the archives. Right. Oh, if I, I ever want to know anything one. that happened so. in the past three years, I'm coming to see you. Yeah. Exactly. I got it all in the archives. Great. It's done with that. Thank you. Um, the South County EMS, EMS lease. We've yeah. Got so, so I read that. You, I think it's a good idea just to add on to that. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm, I'm good. This okay. Was, no, this was just the same lease. We just... Yep. Same right. lease. Same, same dollar amount. Same, same dollar amount. Everything was the same. Um, Actually, it was a little cheaper, wasn't oh. it? Oh, it was the I same. Thought, I thought, oh, was it? Okay. Um, oh, I just had a question on the, the one that tenants shall re be responsible for repair and all alterations and improvements. Well, there are two constructed during the so but in other places it talks about we would add on or something well, like that it, or how I, do you foresee I, this there were several issues with that lease that kind of got my attention and it, it primarily referred to the tenants making alterations and repairs and stuff like that and i questioned that uh, but there is one paragraph in there that says only with the approval, written approval of the landlord, can any of this stuff take right. place. Right. So do interior stuff. Not like even a, even well, interior. Like if they want to cabinets to, and stuff. If they want to put something on the wall, they can do. But if they right. want to relocate a wall or something, like that, they have to get written approval from okay. um, the landlord. That's why I just wanted to make and sure. It, but that it was. and it did. It, the reason it, it caught my attention is because there were six different places where it talked about them, you know, making changes or alterations and only one spot where it said that they needed to get a written permission from the landlord. Uh, but apparently that covers the whole lease. So. Okay. okay. I'm good know. with that then. Um, I am noticing that rubbish collection there. So yeah. We should fill that in. Yeah, that was um, empty too, right? Shall so. be responsible for rubbish collection? Yeah. The, who that does would that be the, the town. The tenant. Okay. No, it would be them. The tenant. Skims. Yeah. The right. Okay, so yeah. skims. Or whatever, right. however the reference is being made. Bruce? Question, Bruce? Uh, what is the amount of the lease? Thirty-six thousand dollars. And um, I heard you mention alterations. They they're thinking about putting in the um, 
exhaust system. Mm -hmm. Is that accounted for in the lease? Are they allowed to do that? Um, they would have to ask. Permission? Yes. And if any alterations to the roof would be? They would have to ask. They can't make any alterations. They can't do any repairs, um, you know, or any, anything of that sort without the permission of the landlord. Okay. And you have to get a building permit? Who would pull a building permit? It would depend on what, if it was something required for a building permit, you know, we would, no, it would town. be negotiated, you okay. know, whether they do it, their contractor or, or whatever. Has there been a review of the 36,000 on our town costs of that building operation? Um, I would have to say officially no, but the only expenses that the town will occur is whatever portion of insurance that we have on the building and the cost of mowing the lawn or plowing the driveway. And are you setting aside a, a building maintenance account for roof the entire, repair? The siding? entire amount's going to be set aside. Is there going to be a special account for that? Uh, we are. I don't know if it's a revolving. I don't, I don't understand, you know, Understood. what it's called, but it's, there's going to be a special account where that money is going to go. It's not going into the general fund. It's going into a special account. Primarily or capital improvement. Capital improvement. Whatever. I, no, I, it's not going to our capital improvement. No, but it have its own capital. It's improvement. going to have its own. So it, that will be for future expansion, or you know, 20 years down the road, we need a roof. roof. The money will be there. Or if repaving. We have, or repaving. Anything, anything that the, or that expansion the property expansion of the needs. parking lot. Anything whatever. that we yeah. And um, drainage issues. Okay. Don't say drainage issues. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't know what happened. We All right, as long as you know that we have enough money to cover it, 36000 sounds reasonable, but... Yeah, I mean, it was a... It was a I mean, I, I'm sure you've looked at 5, 10 years, 20 years out, roof replacement, driveway replacement, all these costs the well, town will incur. We've had discussions with the other towns, and, and it was brought to our attention quite clearly that, you know, you think about it... Uh, you know, in 10 years, it's $360,000. What's Deerfield going to do with all that money? Yep. You know, uh, but as we know that anything the town does seems to be outrageously expensive. Understood. So Duh. that way we'll never have to go to the, hopefully never have to go to the taxpayers in any of the communities for okay. a penny, you know, that money will be there. All right. And it's still saving the organization 50% what they're currently paying now. So, so we own the, ex we own re we're responsible for the exterior, they're responsible for the interior? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that way, like if you need the uh, driveway resealed, you know, small things, we have, uh, we have money set aside to do that that wouldn't affect either to all, any of our towns. And it's just, just so you know, I mean, about hazardous waste? They deal with anything like that themselves. Understand with the vehicles, the spill, or? Yes. Insurance, are paid, insurance, insurance pays that. Our insurance will pay for that? They, well, don't, need rent, they don't need renter's insurance? All they're these? going to have their own insurance. They are. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the vehicle's insurance will pay would pay if there was like an oil leak or a transmission leak or in our building. Yeah. It comes under your property insurance. Part of your auto insurance. Originally, right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. So do you want to uh, So I'm, I'm good with it. I'd yep. make a motion to I'll just fix the uh the I make a I make a motion we approve the lease um, with the addition of the dissolution, whatever, you whatever that oh, paragraph was. You can do was. that, Wendy. Correct. You can just talking add with, that. That's talking with Lisa about if we dis, if the if it dissolves, what, you know, how we the, deal with the that. same adopt that adopt yeah, that. Yeah, the yeah. same wording that we use oh, for our municipal so. agreement. Yeah, what everyone was um, comfortable did, with. Did I hear you say that the town would deal with the trash? Um, no. No. Scams. Oh, EMS Scams. did, yeah. but okay. no. Scams right. does okay. that. EMS yeah. will take um, care of their own trash. 5.5. 5. Okay. It just was blank. And we should you made a motion. Yes, I okay. made the motion that we I'll accept second, it with second the that addition motion. of okay. the Yep. Is there any further language? discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we have to bring that forward to Skims? Yes. Yep. Right. Okay. We're putting forward to that. When's your next meeting? Uh, September... Um, Um, September 20th. Do you want me to get this to, to Zach for distribution, or you, would you just like to bring it when you get closer to the meeting? Um, uh, could you give it to Zach for um, distri uh, dis 
distribute it to the um, okay. boo, please. I think it's important people have a chance to look at it yeah, at sure. the time. Yep. yep, very good. Okay, we have appointments to the state primary poll workers, uh, Jane Gilbert Keith, Albert Olmsted, uh, Marie St. Peters, and Bruce A. St. Peters. I make a motion we appoint them. I second that motion. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you want me to read this? No, you just, didn't you just make that we motion? We did make the motion. It wasn't exact, but okay. We'll I'm use good. that in a minute. Thank <laughs> you. So do either of you two have any new business? No, I don't think so. Um, actually, I did. I, I want to make sure that, um, I mean, we're, I know it's just the beginning of August, but I was hoping Wendy would reach out to um, um, the other towns in Union 38 and put a get meeting together. Um, we're this, actually meeting with the town administrators, are meeting with the superintendent. We're set working on a date to do that. We meet and we can, okay, can bring so, this up at that meeting. All right, so the invitees would be all four select boards, all four finance committees, and the agenda item would be um, school committees, forming a capital improvement committee for Frontier. We would open the agreement only for capital improvement discussion. Don't they already have a capital improvement? What happened to the Oh, no, they have a committee, but it's okay. not an official committee. It's not part of the agreement. If oh. you're going to have a okay, capital improvement, can you have to open up the Union 38 agreement and okay. add it. All right. I guess so the next thing is our select board comment announcements for letters received about the Dollar General store. Okay. Um, we have the Dollar General letter. Yep. Good evening. Uh, my name is Judy Holmes. I live at 64 Hillside Road in South Deerfield, and I am part of a um, new grassroots ad hoc committee called uh, Deerfield for Responsible Development. Um, I will let the rest of the folks up here introduce themselves. I'm Debbie Shriver. Um, we sent the uh, the uh, select board a letter um, on uh, July. Judy, could you just speak a dash la louder sure. so that can people turn up can the mic, please, at FCAT, so that people at home could hear you. Okay, um, we sent you all a, a letter on July 31st. Um, yep. A number of things have happened since then, so we've updated that letter, and oh. we have some new oh, ones you. to give you. All right. Oh, thank you. It's like Valentine's Thank you, Deb. <laughs> kind of. Put a little, of. Bat, kind a, little, of. <laughs> a little bag in front. Everybody drops them in. And the winner is. Minus. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'd like to read this into the record, if I may. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, dear Mr. Camosa, uh, Ms. Ness, and Mr. McDaniel, we are writing to express the shared concerns of Deerfield's residents and business owners about the lack of progress in addressing the unpermitted clear-cutting of mature trees on state-owned land along Route 5 near our homes. This forested area also ran along Mill Village Road, a town roadway. Research obtained by our citizens group, Deerfield for Responsible Development, indicates that the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, quote, did not issue a permit to this property owner for tree removal along the state roadway, unquote. As the town's top elected officials, the select board has a duty to intercede with MassDOT to represent the interests of Deerfield citizens as MassDOT evaluates, quote, future options and action that can be taken to address the unpermitted tree removal activities. Even if decisions on what action to take ultimately rest with MassDOT District 2 Permit and Enforcement Department or MassDOT's main office in Boston. 
The tree clear-cutting incident carried out without warrant, warning and rushed through to completion on the morning of Saturday, April 28th, shocked both the residents of Mill Village Road neighborhood and the Deerfield community as a whole. It has cast a dark cloud over public discussion concerning a developer, developer's proposal to build a huge Dollar General box store at the intersection of Route 5 and Mill Village Road. For transparency's sake, and for the sake of the town's residents and business owners, it would be in the best interest of Deerfield for the select board to actively engage with MassDOT on this issue. If no substantive effort is exerted by the select board to intercede concerning possibly illegal activity, it would set a bad precedent for Deerfield town governance. And the timetable of events related to the proposed Dollar General box store is as follows. January 3, 2018, Purchase and sale agreements are executed between Lascotti Development Corporation and two landowners for lot 29 and 30 on Mill Village Road. January 4th to April 22nd, 2018, engineering work takes place at the site. Monday, April 23rd, 2018, a site plan review application form from an entity identifying itself as South Deerfield DG Services LLC is delivered to the town and stamped as received. Saturday, April 28, 2018, trees on about a half acre of state-owned land are clear-cut. In nine drawings included in the developer's site development plan, no trees are in evidence on the state-owned land on either side of the proposed driveway, although this may be an oversight. Whatever precipitated these, quote, unpermitted tree removal activities, unquote, the result has been effectively to deny town officials the opportunity to enforce Deerfield zoning bylaws on the design of new commercial developments, which in part require a developer to, quote, section 5461, minimize the volume of cut and fill, the number of removed trees, six inch caliper or larger, the length of removed stone walls, the area of wetland vegetation displaced, the extent of stormwater flow increased from the site, and erosion and threat of air and water pollution. These unpermitted tree removal activities may have a material bearing on the proposed land sites and the developer's application for special permits related to development of the site, and they need to be given appropriate consideration by all town agencies. There must also be appropriate consequences for this unpermitted tree cutting activity. Mill Village Road residents have told us that they want the forest that once stood on the state land to be restored by planting mature trees. The absence of mature trees may already be causing harm. Be causing harm. Several incidents of flooding have been reported by the owner of Rock Fossil and Dinosaur Shop uh, and a butter in the past 44 days. Our group's commitment with MassDOT suggests that the Permit Enforcement Department has been expecting the town of Deerfield to seek substantive discussion about the clear cutting of trees. By interceding with MassDOT in this issue, the select board would have the opportunity to discuss a more serious concern. Mill Village Road residents have told us that they fear for the safety of their children and the public at large if town officials eventually approve a huge retail box store at the intersection of Route 5, Mill Village Road, and North Main Street. As you know, numerous accidents at this intersection in recent years have resulted in serious personal injuries and fatalities. MassDOT classifies this intersection as a, quote, top crash location for the area. The developer of the proposed box store has informed the planning board that it is seeking a permit from MassDOT to link the development site to Route 5 by installing a driveway through state-owned land where the tree clear-cutting occurred. Building a driveway so close to this intersection would greatly magnify the dangers that already exist since copious traffic entering and leaving the driveway would substantially increase the likelihood of multiple vehicle smash-ups. No retail box stores, no matter how large, no matter how, which brand of store, should be developed at this location until an independent traffic analysis can be performed and a plan for comprehensive public safety improvements uh, of this intersection can be developed. The select board should therefore ask MassDOT to delay action on any new pending or renewal application for a Route 5 driveway permit related to the proposed development. Deerfield for Responsible Development formally requests that the select board immediately contact MassDOT District 2 Permit and Enforcement Division in Northampton about the trees, clear cutting, and public safety issues raised above. And we also request that these matters be placed on the August 22nd regular meeting agenda to inform Deerfield's residents and business owners concerning all actions it has taken um, on them with MassDOT. 
Um, we also have a, a, a couple of um, uh, other letters uh, from other, from the abutters and from other community members. You want this mic here? Yeah. I'm Susan Half, 11B Mill Village Road. Dear South Deerfield officials, I am writing to you regarding the huge Dollar General development proposed for Route 5 and Mill Village Road. The new MassDOT guidelines accepted in 2014 include green dot uh, guidelines, and I've included a link to those guidelines in this letter, that state in part, Private developers that access state-owned highways are required to design, build, and operate their projects in a manner that encourages and seeks to increase walking, bicycling, and transit use. The developer <coughs> has failed to address these requirements in its current plans. In fact, because MassDOT has des designated this intersection as a top crash location, the current plans would actively discourage anything but private vehicle use at this large retail store. I request that you de deny any develop development permits for any project on Route 5 that fails to comply with the Green Dot guidelines. Thank you. Give you all. Thank you. Also. Thank you. So actually, uh, sorry. I have two letters, um, but I'll start with this one, and they're um, they're both signed by myself. Elissa Clement, Farby okay. Evans Lane, and can you speak up a little. Yeah, yes, Elisa. and Deborah Underhill. You can pull that forward. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. That's of 26 A Mill Village Road, um, but many of our neighbors share our concerns. Dear Select Board, I am writing on behalf of my neighbors in the Mill Village Road Evans Lane section of Deerfield to convey our shared con concern about the lack of progress in addressing the unpermitted clear cutting of mature trees on state-owned land along Route 5 near our homes. This forested area also ran along Mill Village, Village Road, a town roadway. As you know, public hearings are underway before the planning board on a developer's application for a special permit to build a huge dollar general store right next to our homes near the intersection of Route 5, Mill Village Road, and North Main Street. The developer has informed the planning board that it is seeking a permit from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation to link the proposed development site to Route 5 by installing a driveway through the state-owned land where these trees once stood. Numerous accidents involving serious personal injuries or fatality have occurred at this intersection in recent years. Indeed, MassDOT classifies this intersection as a top crash location for the area. And there's a link to that provided in the letter. We believe that building a driveway so close to this intersection would greatly magnify the dangers and we fear for the safety of our children and the public at large should town officials eventually approve a, proposed, a proposal to build a huge dollar general at this location. As the town's top elected officials, the select board could expand the discussion on tree cutting to include public safety concerns about this dangerous intersection. We believe that until an independent traffic analysis could be performed and a plan for comprehensive public safety improvements can be developed for this intersection, the select board should ask MassDOT to delay action on any new pending or renewal applications for a Route 5 driveway permit related to the proposed development. I formally request that the select board immediately contact the MassDOT District 2 Permit and Enforcement Division in Northampton about the tree clear cutting and driveway permit issues. And I also request that the board place these issues on the agenda for its August 22nd regular meeting to inform Deerfield's residents and business owners concerning all actions it has taken on them. Um, I, I also wanted to mention, uh, you may recall that I came to the May 2nd select board meeting and at that time asked for the select board to intercede with MassDOT on our behalf. 
And I'd like to ask what actions were taken as a result of that. Well, to the best of my knowledge, I know Carolyn has made a few phone calls, and I'll let her speak to that. But I've also called them, and it's not, it's totally out of the town's hands. It's town, pro I mean, it's state property. It was a state uh, issue. They're the ones that are the only ones that can deal with enforcement and any fines or anything that goes along with that. They're in charge of issuing any permits and stuff like that. There's not much that the town can do at all. You know, we can express our concerns, which we have, but other than that, there's not much that we can do with that issue. Okay. Um, I, I should just state that members of our group have spoken with MassDOT and were given a very different answer, that the town does have the authority to intercede with them on our behalf. Who did you speak with? Do you have something in writing from them? I wasn't the one who personally spoke with them. I don't yeah. know if... Yeah. Is one of you? Tally. Tally. Okay, Hi. thank you. Tally Stark, Keats Road, co-chair of development, um, Deerfield for Responsible Development. Um, different members of our group have spoken with Mass DOT. Who did you speak District with? District 2. Um, Eric L. Eric L, Eric. yeah. I, Eric L. I, I have spoke Does Eric with, live um, in Deerfield? Okay. I've spoke with Jay Ellie. Um, Jay, Jay Ely. Ely. He's the permit yeah. manager. Okay. That's who I've spoken to. Mm -hmm. um, what the, as the last time I spoke to him, um, and Wendy can follow up on this, is that um, it's out of District 2's hands at the moment. It's gone to um, Mass DOT's general counsel in Boston. Um, and when Jay... Jay's was not clear on the next step um, because, or how, what was going to proceed, how were we going to proceed because um, this has never happened before, apparently. Um, <laughs> uh, but never happened before. The trees being cut um, and then actually just people. Yeah, just farms. happened in yeah, uh, but people complaining. Hadley and happened in yep. East Hampton. Yeah. And well, people yeah. ha wanting the trees to be either replanted or replaced or whatever. Uh, so anyway, I was told that the, they were gathering, the Boston office or general counsel was gathering facts and that um, he wasn't sure what to do next. So um, it was out of their hands. So as far as my understanding is, there's not really anything we can do locally anymore. And what has happened is Wendy contacted our town council, Adam, and had Adam call the D mess. DOT's general Boston Council, right? Um, yes, I, I updated him and I said there's a lot of concern in the community, him being Adam Costa, our, our land use lawyer, and you might know from planning board meetings. And he contacted a MassDOT District 2, as I have, as you have, who hasn't, right? <laughs> Please raise your hand. And I got the same story that we've all had um, about um, they're looking at what ne next actions they might take. And they said they recommended he contact general deputy counsel in uh, MassDOT. He, he, we, we actually talked before, sh shortly after he made that call, and he said, I don't expect them to call back. This is not unusual for state general counsel, counsels to call back municipal attorneys. But they did. They did call back. And what he relayed, and I think I've shared that email um, with the planning board as well as the select board uh, basically said um, we are weighing uh, the, we're looking at the value of the trees that were cut so the monetary value yes okay. so, I assumed that I, I my understanding there's no um, they don't really have a fine for uh, cutting the trees what they do is they assess the value of the trees but I don't know whether they send a bill to the person and then he sends money to Massachusetts or, you know, or if it's dedicated towards the replanting. I'm, I'm not really sure. It was not clear to me that there was any real answer or procedure in place for that. Can I ask a quick question? Um, so based on your letter and, and, and some other things, it, it sounded like you were getting a different answer, like that, that our select board and our town council has not contacted anybody and the select board hasn't, has taken no action. Is that what you're that hearing was from in them? July. Um, but we've called before July. Yes, I mean, multiple, this is multiple yeah, times. So how do you... Ha it probably is a income failure. 
Well, I, I think the difference is you're. Got gotcha. you. I'm sorry, but I think that we've uh, called. I have. I, I know, know it's Carolyn our concern has, of all of we've ours. We've asked. So. We weren't calling. I wasn't calling in any official vote of the board saying we want to intervene or anything. We were just saying, what's right. going on? Please fill mm -hmm. us in because this has been going on since you first visited mm -hmm. our, our meeting to talk about that. Yeah. Um, and, and um, you know, I was trying to clarify with council. Um, the board had not taken a vote to direct. Please find out what the board can do. Um, but we have not been able to discern that there is anything we can do um, so at I, this point. I so. just want to thank you all for reaching out to them. We do greatly appreciate it. But I do want to formally ask the board to please, um, I don't know if you need to send a letter or if calling is good enough, but to advocate for our town and our community and to ask specifically what is in the law that MassDOT can do to hold the landowners responsible, what is in the law that they can do to restore the land back to, with mature trees, um, and also as far as um, the application for the driveway and whatnot, we really want to formally ask you to talk and or write to Mass DOT and request that they do not issue an application. How, how can you? How can we do that? I you mean, can do that by writing a letter and asking. No, these people have a right to sell their property, and it's up to the state, not to the town. And if no, it no one's meets saying they can't all the sell requirements, their, their they can do what they want. This is America. I, you, I get you don't like this, but we will do everything we can to protect our community, and that's everybody in here. And that what we can do is make sure that they follow all of the rules that are put in place by not only this town, but the state of Massachusetts. And the state, not the town of Deerfield, is the one who regulates that road. And there's not much we can do. With all due respect, Mr. Camosa, I think that there is actually um, a responsibility of elected officials to advocate for the town. And when I'm talking about this permit um, being put on hold, that is for safety reasons until a proper traffic study and review of that has been well, done. I mean, that is I, not about freedom. That is not about please, America. Please, just a moment. So, I, I mean, so we're asking you to keep our community safe and just make sure that due process happens. That's our request. We, we will and I would do like that. to hear from the other board members as well, well on that. Excuse me, Miss. That intersection has been there for a long time. There's currently a 22,000 square foot uh, building there, and the accidents happen. It isn't that the intersection is so dangerous, it's the people who drive on it. The, the intersection didn't cause any accidents, it's the people who don't stop. They speed around. That's where all these head on collisions happen. And I, I, I understand your concern, it's been my concern. I've also spoken to Mass DOT. What can they do to help improve this thing? Can they change the lines on the road? Can they reduce the speed limit further before people get to that intersection? Could they install a light? These are all things that they say, oh, great suggestions, but it's up to them. It's not up to us. But I've gone there twice just to say, what can we do? I've involved the police chief to get involved. You know, what can we do with this? I mean, you know, yeah, a traffic study is important, sense. but you're still talking about a 9,000 square foot building. You go down the road, we have a 200 and something thousand square foot thing, and they claim to get two million visitors every single year. There's no traffic light there. Our ambulance isn't there 24-7. You know, it's... Thank you for recognizing that it is a very problematic intersection, and that's why it is a, yes. a, a top crash, crash location, according to Mass DOT. And I'm glad that you can see that that is problematic. So I'd hope that you could see with the potential of this development going through and them getting a permit to go through the state land that that adds more risk to that area. But do you understand that everybody that owns property abuts state land? No, I no. don't. But if you live on a rural road, you don't abut state land. On Route 5, excuse me, I wasn't clear. Oh, that, okay. um, I, that was a concern of mine. Um, and when we had comments to the planning board, the select board, we um, requested, uh, or we voted to request, that um, traffic study be considered so that the safest access to that property mm -hmm. was determined by a traffic study. And um, I, I mean, I feel very comfortable writing a letter, you know, making sure that that happens, or requesting MassDOT 
um, do a traffic study to determine the safest location and what can be done to improve the safety of that mm -hmm. intersection because I mean I come down there at least once you know sometimes two or three times a day uh, two or three times a week and um, I, I so, sometimes you you can't it's very difficult across the street really depending on the time right. so I mean I do feel that it is legitimate to ask Mass DOT to take extra consideration of that well, intersection. Can we, they, can they, we, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, they, they have already started a traffic count. Uh, they started that two weeks ago. So Can, can we formally, as a board, request uh, further clarification from DOT on, on what the, what, where the process stands right now? Obviously, we don't have jurisdiction over it, but we, but we can voice our concern for the safety of our residents in that that intersection, and to find out what's taken so long to to um, to make a decision on on the clear cutting and the and the violation of the permit. Um, I just I just want to make clear that I think um, you know when Alyssa when you called me first you had called me and I had called the twenty four seven operation desk. And I told you they when you had called me, I said, I'm going to call and make the complaint. But, you know, they sometimes they take a while to get back. And remember, I called you, like, within a few minutes. And mm -hmm. I said, well, they called me right back. It was pretty amazing. And they had said that there was a legitimate permit. So, and then there was just all this story going back and forth. So I, I think part of the reason that this is taking so slow or there is so much confusion on the mass DOT part and putting us off is because they actually messed up. You know, they they themselves didn't have the correct story and didn't have, you know, I mean, they were saying that there was a legitimate permit that, and then, you know, so I think there was some action taken within DOT itself. And, and I think, I'm not trying to say that they legitimately are putting putting us off on this, but there was some confusion within DOT itself, and their confusion was transmitted to the landowner and to us as, you know, um, town officials as well. So I, I'm i not saying that, that it's 100% legitimate, but there was, there was an awful lot of confusion around this whole issue. And I also don't think that there was, they had, have had that many protests, organized protests, um, before on this. You're talking about a permit to cut the trees. Yes. Yeah. I, I think what might be helpful is if the select board would acknowledge some way or other formally that, that cutting those trees down was illegal. Right. It's good, well, the, good to, have to know that. This, um, this process probably was not done textbook, but what I did learn is that the owner of the property went to the state, asked them to cut the trees down. Now, I know there's a formal process now, but, you know, out here in the country, people work day and day with these people, and they said, well, let us get our arborists. So a state-paid arborist went to look at these trees and deemed the most of them to be junk and trash. So the district people down there said, go ahead and get rid of it, clean it up. And now, because there's been this opposition, now everybody's like, well, did you fill out form A double zero 30 days before? Well, no, but I never, you know, these, we always like, well, it doesn't matter. You didn't follow the proper protocol, so that's wrong. And so now, because the paperwork wasn't done properly all the way up to Capitol Hill, now it's become an issue. And so I believe that the state is now trying to figure out, all right, what do we do? Because, you know, the landowner is saying, hey, to this guy, you told me to do it, and this guy was the arborist. He told me that was junk, so we did it. You know, and this guy's, yeah, well, I guess I goofed up. I should have had you fill out this form or what. You should have gone through this. And so now this is where we're at. Do you know if the arborist was a, a state employee or a, a, an independent person or someone who the Somebody owner from the brought state, in? that's all I know. You what? I don't even know who it was, to be honest with you. It might be interesting to know who that yeah. person yeah. was. Yeah. It seems I like. I do know. Um, I would also just like I to. spoke with him. To point out that these um, these protocols, these policies are in place for a reason, and um, what you're describing it sounds like a backdoor dealing, and that's not above board. And for someone to think that that would be legitimate in the first place shows a lack of integrity, and I think there should definitely be some 
follow through on this situation. I, Mike, I'm, I'm not sure, Carolyn, but that sounds like what you were saying. That the, yeah. there was a I think they're bad trying communication, to, misunderstanding. Yeah, I don't I think know. They're trying I to clean up. Go that I, I, far, I think but. I think us yeah. writing an official letter probably um, will have some, you know, carry a little bit more weight than just random phone calls. I mean, every time I call, I identify myself yeah. as a town mm -hmm. official, and Wendy certainly mm -hmm. does, and our town mm -hmm. lawyer, mm -hmm. our town council certainly did. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's how we got the call back. But um, we'll you know, make a motion to to write that letter. We have one more comment back here. Oh. Okay. oh. I would just like to say, since I watched the cutting of the trees, um, that they clearly were not junk trees because I saw them being cut into eight-foot log lengths. They were delimbed, cut into eight-foot log lengths, and a lumber truck came up and loaded those stems, the trunks, on and went away with them. Now they've probably been to Canada and turned into veneer by now, <laughs> but the the junk tree uh, story doesn't hold because you don't cut junk trees. You don't go to the trouble of delimbing them and cutting them into log lengths and putting them on a lumber truck if they're junk. Well, that's true. I have it. You, you need to come. come yeah, come, there's there's one here or wherever. Oh, yeah, come on over here. Just so you can identify yourself. Uh, Tim Helchi, uh, Greenfield Road. The other thing that I think is important to keep in mind here is that, as suggested in our letter, there are reasons to suggest that this this unpermitted tree activity that we're told about tree cutting activity is related materially to a business transaction that's possibly going to occur in the town and the timing is not coincidental um, permits or applications are applied to the town and five days later this is clear-cut so it seems to me that there is possibly a relationship between this application for a large proposal to build a retail store and tree cutting that we believe to be probably not handled in the proper way so um, some of this nuance needs to be communicated to MassDOT along with the dangers that this traffic intersection mm -hmm. occurs because they're not isolated incidents. Right. So I would ask you in your letter to include this sort of information that we've provided to you. Thank you. I have responses to like three different things. Okay. Um, one was... I, I agree, these were not junk trees. Not only did I watch them being cut, but I have pictures of these trees over the years. Beautiful trees. And I can provide pictures if you'd like. Um, secondly, you mentioned um, Cumberland Farms cutting down trees. Were, did they illegally cut down trees? I haven't heard about this if that occurred. Um, Leave it to me to start trouble. Huh? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm just yes, asking the question. They, they cut down some trees near the highway. Was that permitted, though, or was that? I have no idea. I just saw the trees move come up. That okay, way. because per whether it's permitted or not is a huge difference, obviously. That's apples and oranges if it was permitted. Um, and I also have noticed they've left quite a few trees next to them. It's not like they went in and clear-cut all the trees in front of their facility. And their facility is also much closer to Route 5, so it's quite a different situation. And I did want to also respond to the safety of the intersection. Um, the... Um, it, it's true, I've seen over and over again, drivers drive very dangerously in that situation, but it, it, that's not really, it's not about, it's not dependent on drivers always driving safely. It's up to us to design traffic in a better way. So um, usability and human factors engineering designs things so that they will work well for people within the guidelines of understanding how people work and what they do. It happens that I actually have a PhD in cognitive psychology and I've worked in a driving simulator lab on designing things um, for safer traffic. So I just wanted to say that, that it's not about expecting people to behave differently. It's about designing things so that it's safe within their behavior. I, I think that was the gist of our comments to the planning board, mm. you know, why okay. we wanted to have um, a traffic study to, to determine how to make that a safer intersection and, and what would be the ideal location 
given that circumstances for the driveway. I mean, we. I mean, for, I for I'm, me, I'm, for I'm, me, regardless of what goes in there, it's a dangerous yes. intersection. If there's any way right. that we can make it safer, I don't care if you know right. flowers or trees just go back in there. We still, many people. I, I've seen my father's been in an accident there 30 years ago. I mean, it's just a dangerous place. But, you know, <laughs> and, and, and I'm not trying to poo-poo any of this, but it doesn't even at the planning board level. We can come up with all the great solutions in the world. We can't even paint a polka dot on that road. That's illegal. The state has to do this. They deal with a lot more traffic Sorry, issues. What's that? But that's why it's important to write the letter. To, well, to I'm, I'm saying that the people at the Department of Transportation, any of you have driven toward Boston on any back roads, Deerfield has no traffic compared to most of the places around here. And, you know, DOT does a good job of managing traffic flow and traffic lights, you know, all kinds of different things. So even whether this board, we can write a letter of concern, and the planning board, we can do all kinds of things there, but we can't do anything with that. It's up to the state to tell these people what to do. And even that, they can't do it. It's usually the state gets involved, and they're the people who make the decisions, whether they widen the intersection, put a traffic light there, or anything. It's totally up to them. Yeah. One thing that we've been concerned about is um, fully understanding what kind of studies the planning board is asking for with regard to traffic safety um, because the developer, and, and this is irrelevant to what kind of store, whether it's a Dollar General or a Trader Joe's, um, what kind of traffic study has been done. In this instance, the, the developer provided a one-page traffic memo which used canned ITE data that doesn't even talk about real life traffic. So our concern is that while this is being considered, and you know, if it's approved, it's approved. Um, while it's being considered, it's the time to press this issue with MassDOT. If there's no curb cut on Route 5, then the town controls the curb cuts on Mill Village Road, and it's a totally different system. All the traffic would be forced to go in into an existing traffic pattern and you wouldn't end up with a situation where a car is pulling out 100 feet from the same intersection across traffic trying to take a left turn. Cars are coming this way, cars are coming this way. They're coming out of North Main Street and they're coming out of Mill Village Road. So that's an incredibly dangerous situation. So if MassDOT doesn't allow a Route 5 curb cut, it changes the dynamics of what goes on at that traffic intersection. And a traffic study might be the impetus for actually getting the state to do a tra traffic light or a traffic circle or some other improvement there which would save lives in Deerfield. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If I may just put a coda to what you just said, Tim. With respect to the board's role, you are our advocates. That's that, you are our advocates before the state. They may control what happens there, and that may be their decision to do that, but you help to speak on behalf of us as citizens. That's right. really what we're asking you to do in this instance with Mass DOT. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. I, I, I guess I take it a little bit. I mean, I personally have been down to that building four times on this issue. I mean, I. I'm the kind of person that if I have something to say to somebody, I respect that they're going to listen to me. I don't have to badger them and go there every other week and, hey, did you get, what are you doing about this? What are you doing about this? I don't see where, I, I mean, if this board wants to write a letter, that, that's fine. I have mm -hmm. no problem with it. But, you know, the people in Northampton and the people in Boston know how this community feels. They've heard from me. They've heard from Carolyn. They've heard from Wendy. They've heard from our town attorney. They've heard from planning board members, and I think they've heard from probably some of you. I don't, I, you know, I, I guess I'm, I feel lost. Is, you know, what is it that you want us to do other than write a letter for, to them? I, oh, mean, I think we should write another letter and keep advocating on our behalf. I, I mean, okay. I don't know what else to do, but... Um, well, that's it. I, I don't we, know what to do either. Well, I, that, you know, I, we'll I think a formal that. letter that mm -hmm. is addressed to the appropriate people in Boston, right. because it seems that the jurisdiction has been transferred there, and yeah, whatever like is going to happen, even if they push it back to the local level, it will be determined in Boston. But a, a formal I, letter with, with specific mm -hmm. information in it you know, related to this question, yep. I think would go a long way to answering our concerns. Okay. 
I, I agree because I, I, I honestly think um, the local district two office isn't it doesn't really have anything it's it, it's done my understanding is they're done they don't have anything more right. input at this point they're, um, although, although they're waiting nice for direction. to know who this arborist was and how that process well, I don't remember his name I mm -hmm. have it somewhere okay. yeah well, he works for them okay, okay. he's a well, mass dot worker appreciate your you know listening That's to right. our concerns sure thank you so, for coming um, yeah you had made a motion I'd make a motion to send a letter capturing this this sentiment and gathering as much detail as we can to, you know, force our concern on that, on that well, curb cut, I, tree yeah. cutting, and I'll, traffic I'll, safety. I'll second that. I think it is important to, you know, just like the reason why I told, Alyssa, why I told you I called the 24-7 desk is because it's recorded and, it, mm -hmm. and it's, a, it's not only recorded, but it's also logged in. And I think a letter is an official login Mm -hmm. Whereas our phone calls sometimes. Can I, right. can I say something? Just that, you know, I feel the frustration. Uh, I felt that as well. I felt like it's our, it's our town, it's your town. Tell us, you know, and we're, we ask questions and we're, it doesn't get clear. We, you know, and so I think simply to have information so you feel like you're an informed, mm -hmm. as informed as possible. Uh, body and be kept up to date on things is worthwhile in and of itself. Yes. Uh, probably be a good idea to also send it to our representatives, our state mm -hmm. legislators, so so they're aware of this. That's usually where you can get more help sometimes, just to get good information. Idea. Not necessarily to do anything right. in particular, just simply to what's yep. going on. Sure. Thank you. And I think that's part of what we wanted is just to make Sure. So uh, my, I, I would, I'll draft something if you vote, to, you haven't voted. So I made a motion, a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So I could draft something and circulate it to you and you can. Okay. Thank you. Thank and you we very can much. Sign. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. I, I think a Thank formal for letter coming. is a lot of, yeah. basically what we were asking Happy for. So it. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. you for coming. Oh. oh, great. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay. Um, do we have any Board of Health comments? Carolyn, you already told us about the mosquitoes. Yeah. Um, um, just if, so. you, if you have any more tick bites, um, keep sending uh, your ticks down to UMass to be tested so we have data on them and you have a peace of mind whether they are have Lyme disease or one of the other. Um, bacterial infection. On I heard on the news there's a new new tick out. Yeah, yeah but it hasn't. Oh. oh, it's not here yet. No, it, um, there has been none captured in Massachusetts. Is it, it's not the Lone Star. Well, we're not traveling. No, them. it's a um, it's another one. Yeah. It's another one now. One. I just on Board of Health stuff. I just I a few comments I've and I've talked to people with um, with bats and I just wanted to uh, commend. Is it Colleen? Colleen. Colleen. He's done a great job of, you know, some people have called and they've had bats and they, in the house they woke up and they don't know. And so Colleen's been really responsive about getting to take care of our, our residents and um, having them tested, sent out, or whatever they need to do. But I just want to mention, and a thank, thank you to him for being attentive I, to I our residents. I just would like to mention very much how much worth it is, because um, Dick used to do that. I've done it in the past. Well, I'm so grateful nice to him that I haven't had to, to, have do, to that. do that. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to rain on your parade, but he's out of work for the next four weeks. Oh, oh no. Great. Why? He's sick. Oh, I don't know if something happened to him. Yeah. All right. Oh, gosh. Well, okay. So do we have anyone, no from the, anyone from the public would like to make a comment? Bruce. What happened? Bruce Hunter, uh, this relates to... Uh, an article that was uh, a budget item that was passed at town meeting for the Board of Health for mosquito control, which was stated at town meeting was going to, the $20,000 that was appropriated would not be needed, but would be used for ditch cleaning. I'm just curious what ditch cleaning has occurred and what is planned. Well, Bruce, it wasn't $20,000, it was $11,000. Whatever the dollar value was. The $11,000, number was what um, we have been paying VDCI to do our capture our mosquitoes and test them. Um, VDCI is not um, 
re uh, did not want to renew the contract since we were forming a district. So um, we were able to get the Department of Public Health to do our testing and trapping for us at no charge. And um, we are in the process. We just um, were able to spend the $100,000 CDC grant um, on time. We had to purchase and receive all our traps and equipment by July 31st. So the first month of um, being a commissioner and as a formed board, we focus in on trying to spend the money from the CDC before we lo lost it. And um, our next uh, process is to um, put together a description of a supervisor and um, then put out the job description. So um, at some point, and it will not be this year, but that money is um, available till June 30th of next year. I'm hoping we'll have a supervisor on board by late fall um, and that we will have had three years of data here in Deerfield that would show that it is a public health concern in the Bloody Brook area and that next spring before June 30th, we will be able to use that money towards um, some ditch cleaning or lava siding or whatever, some attempt of public health, since that money was not used for trapping and um, testing. But I do remember at town meeting, you promised people that we were going di to clean ditches. No. I, that's my intention. Okay. Well, but it, it is very, very time consuming to go to meetings, organize from the Vermont line to the Connecticut line, all our communities, <laughs> deal with apparatus on the state level, and hustle money. We also received a $150,000 grant from um, uh, the state to organize this mosquito district. So. We do have funding for the supervisor, but we also have to come up with a budget. We have to come up with the right person that will work with us as communities. I, um, I understand that, and you've done yeah. a great job um, doing that. I just wanted to make sure that the town of Deerfield has now appropriated $11,000 in its annual town meeting for ditch cleaning. I just want to know well, what's, what is we scheduled. We appropriated it from mosquito control in and, a, and associated things. Because well, it was, stated at it, the was time it was because um, we it's had okay. gotten at that so point. So don't, we don't have a schedule now, that's fine. You right. might have one in the spring. Well, and that's fine. Yeah. Uh, it, my next question is um, Have you set a date for the public hearing for Dumont? No. No, because no. we, we haven't got the information from them yet. Okay. It will be hopefully um, that last week in August, though. Um, or you'll hold a special selectman's meeting because you're right. not meeting until... Well, they, they have to submit the paperwork. So if they submit the paperwork by the end of the week or Monday or Tuesday of the next week, well, you have 14 5th. days from then. So I would say sometime, since they want to move forward, sometime in that last week of August is when we would set the date up. Okay. Well, but you we set the date when you advertise. But it's based on their application and they're yeah. completing the paperwork. They have to come and get the butters yep. list Understood. and all of that. And so it might they be have to do end that. of I August, say, first yeah. part of September. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would it be a uh, regular Slotman's meeting? Yes. Hopefully? Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Bruce. Hey. Well, that's it. Anyone else have a comment to make? Any public comment? Nope. All right. Motion to dissolve. Motion to dissolve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming.